Hi. In this lesson, we'll do some rhythmic jazz exercises, and we'll learn how to coordinate the left and the right hand. The exercises are very essential if we want to learn to improvise jazz in a totally free manner, being able to form our music in both a tonal and a rhythmic sense. All of the stuff we are going to learn in this lesson I actually use in the B section of this music video I published some weeks ago. Let's take a very brief listen to this piece. So, let's look into the rhythm and how we can connect right and the left hand, as in the jazz piece. And let's do some exercises. This is a new jazz lesson, by the way, and my name is Oliver Prey. Okay, let's start with the right hand. We name our fingers, finger one, two, three, four, and five. Now, let's create or compose a little pattern for our right hand. So, we simply write down some random finger numbers. It could be any combination, but what about playing finger 5, 4, 2, 1, 3? And we are going to repeat this pattern right after each other. So, we are gonna do this with our fingers. Five, four, two, one, three. Five, four, two, one, three. Five, four, two, one, three, and so on. Now, let's choose some keys for our fingers. In other new jazz lessons, we have discovered the great power of the minor pentatonic hand grip. And it's also this very same grip I use in uh, the music video. So let's place our hand on, for example, the D minor pentatonic scale. And we got our hand grip with our fingers always placed like this. One, two, three, four, five. Now, Let's play our little composition on the pentatonic notes. So we play finger five, four, two, one, three, five, four, two, one, three, five, four, two, one, three, and so on. Okay, let's start a metronome at a slow speed. What about uh, 60 beats per minute? Now, what we want to do is to play 16th notes. We could also play triplets or swing eights. It, it all works great. So in our case, on every main beat we hear on the metronome, we have four sub beats, like this. So here comes the trick. We want to play a note on every subbeat. And we have four subbeats for every main beat. But our pattern is five notes long. So our melodic pattern will constantly be shifted compared to the rhythmic pattern, right? It sounds like this. On the graphic above, you can also see how the melodic pattern and the chunks of four subbeats constantly are shifted. In this way, we have created a nice counterpoint between melody and rhythm. And 
the fact that our melodic pattern and the rhythmic pattern does not fit actually makes our exercise very effectful. We'll realize that when we add the left hand very soon. But before we do that, practice this exercise carefully. This may not be easy, but if you can manage to play this, we are actually a huge step further in the process of understanding how phrases and rhythm can work together in a thrilling way. Okay, let's stop the metronome for a while and talk about what to do with the left hand. So, our right hand is placed on the D minor pentatonic scale. Let's place the left hand on the D minor pentatonic scale as well, just an octave lower. And then we thin out the grip like this. And we got a nice quartal chord. So, for now we have placed our left and right hand in two almost unison grips, just with a thinned out left hand. Now we have to decide when to play the left hand chord. Instead of just playing the chord on a certain subbeat, it could be much more fun and much more educational, by the way, to pick a specific right hand finger on which we want to play our left hand chord. So, Let's choose a right hand finger. It could be any of the fingers, but what about choosing the fifth finger? So, every time we use the right hand fifth finger, we must play our left hand chord. start the metronome and try this out. So let's start up the right hand engine. Now every time we strike the fifth finger, we must play our left hand chord. So it sounds like this. Now, the really smart thing and the really educational thing about this exercise is that right now we automatically learn to put in the left hand chord on all the different subbeats. Above on the, the 16th notes, you can see how we, on turn, manage to hit the different individual subbeats. First, second, Third, four, first, second, third, four, and so on. So, an exercise like this is fantastic, actually. This exercise helps us to become more free with our left hand, in a rhythmic sense. Do this exercise a lot before moving on. You will learn to manage both the left and the right hand together. Okay, but we are not done yet. Not at all. Now I will show you an easy way to vary our exercise in a tonal sense. We will add music to our exercise and learn how to move our hands around on the keyboard. 
that will for sure be fun. Now we'll try to transpose our pentatonic grip to other tonalities. So we can for example go back and forth between the D pentatonic hand grip and the E flat pentatonic hand grip, like this. Let's try this out with the metronome on. So now we have added some variation to our exercise. When you feel ready, you can play other tonalities as well. For example, we can mix in the C pentatonic grip. about also mixing in the A pentatonic grip. Every tonality goes, actually. Just experiment and try out different tonalities. shortly summarize before moving on. In our exercise we actually just follow some very simple and well-defined directions. We use a pentatonic hand grip to manage our fingering. And we use a five note melodic pattern. On a rhythmic pattern based on only four beats. Now let me show you another thing we can do. In other previous lessons we have learned how we can play for example the Dorian scale and other church modes or major modes as some call them by making a row of fifths with our pentatonic hand grip. Well, let me show you how simple this is. If our left hand is on, for example, uh, the thinned out D pentatonic hand grip, then we can with the right hand play D pentatonic, and we can go up a perfect fifth to the A pentatonic, and we can go up another fifth to the E pentatonic. These three pentatonic tonalities go very well together. And if, for example, D is uh, the bass note, we actually play the D Dorian scale. With this row of pentatonic grips, we can actually play all seven church modes. It just depends on, on how we relate the bass note compared to our row of pentatonic grips. Well, now we are actually on a huge detour, talking tonalities and scales. I just want to tell you that when combining the pentatonic tonalities, that we find in the row of fifths, we create a strong, well-known sound structure that is always nice to use. If you want to dig deeper into this, I will of course paste some relevant links below.
Now, back to the topic of this lesson. Let's keep the left hand on the D pentatonic thinned out hand grip. Then we can play our right hand melody pattern, shifting around random between the three pentatonic tonalities, like this. As you may have discovered, we don't have to play the positions of our right hand grip in a row like this. We can play them in different octaves and mix them around. Let's try this with the metronome on. We start the right hand engine. And now comes the rhythmic tricky part. Add the left hand on the right hand fifth finger. Stop the metronome for a short moment. As we did earlier in this lesson, we can of course transpose everything up and down the register. So we can for example go up a half step to the E flat pentatonic hand grip and we can make our row of fifths to locate where to place our right hand. And we can play the three pentatonic positions randomly. And we can, for example, also do uh, the C pentatonic hand grip. And we make the row. the metronome and try this out. This lesson was based on a specific right hand pattern. The 5, 4, 2, 1, 3 progression. But just imagine, we can start all over with our exercise and just create another melodic pattern. And if the melodic pattern makes a counterpoint to the rhythm, it's even better. So, melodic patterns with, for example, uh, three, five, uh, seven, or nine notes in a row are well suited to play against the sixteenth notes, right? So, my real intention with this lesson 
is actually to inspire you to compose your own melodies and patterns. Design your own practice, so to speak. So, with this exercise, we can just go on and on for a whole lifetime and just get better and better practicing our favorite patterns. When you have created and exercised a few different patterns and you have learned to put on the left hand on different right hand fingers as well, you are totally ready to loosen up in a more free manner like this. actually play as in the music video I presented to you in the start of this lesson. Okay, that's it for now. You are, of course, so much welcome to donate a small amount. I'm so grateful to all of you who have donated. You make all this real to me, dedicating my life to make free, public and hopefully also somehow useful and liberating music lessons. Thank you so much. And also a Big thanks to all those who give me likes and post really nice comments below my videos. All this surely encourages me to keep on doing lessons. I surely love you all. See you in about three or four weeks. Warm regards from Oliver Prehn.